Ladies and gentlemen, dear rector, dear rectors of other schools, um, it is, a, I think, an important for the everybody, maybe, not only the people in international management, to develop an international perspective and to use it to say it in ordinary words, it is important how to become a world citizen. But this means that we have to cooperate with people in and from other countries. And that means, of course, first of all, that we speak or have learned a shared language. In many cases, this is nowadays English, but not, enough, not only. And also, acting according to shared rules and standards, which means that if we say something, we mean the same thing with it. Speak a common language, which is necessary in, in, in developing an international uh, standard. Um, we always speak it with our own accent, even if it's, even in, within a country, we can tell from which part of the country the person comes. The accent depends on the place where we learned our first language. And if it happens to you that you meet a foreigner who speaks your language without a foreign accent, he or she probably lived in your country as a child. But the point is that was left evident to many people that we don't only speak with an accent, we also think with an accent, we feel with an accent, and we act with an accent. We have local accents acquired when and where we grew up, and we call this our national culture. Now, I leave the, this for a moment to one of my favorite experts, philosophers, Bill Watterson, who has these very nice cartoons, which also, I think, show very basic truth. And you see that this is Kelvin and Hobbes, and Kelvin ex telling exactly what I tried to tell you before. And if Kelvin says it, it must be true. Now, let me see. Kelvin doesn't want to leave. Yes, here it is. Now, I used the word culture before, and actually, if you look it up in, uh, in Latin, culture comes from a Latin word that means tilling the soil, cultivation. So actually, culture starts with the agriculture, and culture also of animals. But it is usually, it is used for training and refining of the mind, for civilization. We have even ministries of culture in various countries, and that is mainly about what we learn at school. Now, what I use it and what social scientists use it for, the word culture, is for collective ways of acting, thinking, and feeling. This accent I spoke about when we act, think, and feel, and my definition of that is collective, something collective, programming of the mind. I don't mean the mind is programmed, but it is like programming, and we all know what a program is nowadays, and feeling, uh, sorry, if, of the mind, distinguishing the members of one group or category of people from another. And the category could be the nation, could be a region within the nation, could be our occupation, say doctors versus carpenters, versus professors, uh, an organization which is one company versus the other, a company versus university, and also genders, women versus men. Now, I was talking about gaining an international perspective. And what does it mean? It means, first of all, that we become conscious of our own culture amidst the variety of cultures we may meet in people from elsewhere. And in order to get this, there is no substitute for personal international experience. You cannot become an internationalist if you have never traveled outside your country. And we can acquire knowledge about differences in national cultures in our present world, and I hope I have contributed something to that. 
and also we should develop skills for translating between cultures, for understanding if something comes from a certain area that, okay, it probably for me means something else. So when in another culture, in a way, we become children again, we have to start again from learning a new culture. Now, I was talking about knowledge and I said that I contributed something to that. Um, you can say that the, knowledge, the cultures in the world vary according to different solutions for the same basic problems. I say all countries in the world share the same basic problems, but each national society has over time developed its own answers. And in my research, I found six basic problems for each society. And that was, first of all, how much inequality should there be, or how much equality? And you will get very different answers on that in different parts of the world, depending, for, for example, on the amount of inequality there exists within the family between the parents and the children, and between the father and the mother. How afraid are we of unknown people, ideas, and objects? Well, you will be very aware that the answer to that question differs a lot between different parts of the world at present. How dependent are we on our family? And when I talk about family, I don't only talk about parents and children, but also a wider family, extended family, uncles and aunts, grandparents, grand, uh, and so on. Um, how should a man feel how a woman? One half of the world population is male, one half is female, but the meaning of being born as a girl or as a boy differs a lot from one part of the world to another. Do we focus on the future? Do we focus on the present? Or do we focus on the past? Do we look forward or do we tend to look backward? Or do we only look at today? And then the last one, recently added, is may we have fun or is life a serious matter? I just read a book by uh, the present Mexican ambassador to the United States, Miguel Basanez, and he says that one of the main cultural problems in the world is joy. Now, I had already discovered that on this dimension about having fun, Mexico scores higher than any other country. So it is no accident that he says joy is a main area of culture. And these can be seen as six different and separate dimensions of national culture. Now culture is related to our unconscious values and therefore it is in our guts. It is not only here, it's here. And it means that we have strong feelings about it and what is like our culture we feel is normal. Like also uh, Kelvin said in the cartoon I showed, what like our culture is normal is good, it is smart. And what is unlike our culture is evil, is bad. It's stupid. Okay, now, some important things to be said, warnings. First of all, that these dimensions of culture do not apply to individuals. Because a culture, as I said, presupposes a collective or a social system. Individuals don't have cultures. Individuals have personalities. And of course, our personality was influenced by the culture in which we grew up but only to a limited extent. And stereotyping individuals by their supposed culture is a frequent error. We say, okay, Mr. Suzuki is a Japanese. Okay, we know those Japanese. That's how, that's how Suzuki is. But this is, of course, not necessarily true. A society is like a jigsaw puzzle. And if you like to lay jigsaw puzzles, you know that each piece is different. The individuals are the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle. And if you have a good puzzle, every piece is different. And still together, if you have made the puzzle, you have one picture. And if you have made a different puzzle, you have a different picture. And this is 
a nice example of the difference between cultures and individuals. Second thing is, there's also a thing like organizational cultures. Organizational cultures are the cultures of, for example, a university, or even a university department, or even of a company, or even of, um, let's say, an international organization. And uh, they are very different phenomena for national cultures. National cultures are rooted in the values we learned before age 10. And they pass from parents to children. And for management, they are given effects. If a Czech company goes to China, you should not expect that you can teach the Chinese to work like Czechs. So you have to accept that the Chinese are working like Chinese, and you have to learn how that is. For academics, they belong to anthropology. Now, organization cultures are rooted in what I call practices, and they only are only learned the moment you join an organization. The moment you join a university, you learn something about the culture of the university. The moment you join a company, you share the organizational <coughs> cultures, and if you can't do that, you won't stay very long. And with management effort, they can be monitored and, monitored and changed. So uh, they are not a given forever. And for academics, they don't belong to anthropology, they belong to sociology. And sociologists, as we will be aware if we are in social science, are not the same as anthropologists. International organizations function through pra shared practices. So for example, the United Nations functions through certain practices or, or dysfunctions according to those practices and rarely shared values. I was saying in the beginning that I would talk about being a world citizen. Now what do I mean by being a world citizen? And, and I hope enjoying it because I'm not, not here to bring bad news to you but I hope you can go home a bit more cheerful than you came, if that's possible. Um, and first of all, it is important to understand your own cultural software. But not only that, not only understand it, but also accept it. Uh, I could have said be proud of it, but accept it is maybe a better word. It means that you don't say, uh, well, I try to be like an American. Well, if you are a Czech, uh, why aren't you a Czech? Um, experience working in another country, so get your international experience. And if you are in the other country, explore that country, explore its geography, its history, its literature. Try to understand that other culture. Speak at least one other language, and preferably more than one. And make real friends in other cultures. And finally, treat cultural differences as challenges, not as damnations, but as a challenges, as problems to be resolved. And this is my last. Why would we want to be? Maybe you already said a world citizen. Should I be a world citizen? Why would I want to be a world citizen? I say, well, first of all, for yourselves, because you will. It, it will. It, it feels good and it can be important in your life. Also, for the, the world we leave behind us, for our grandchildren, but not only for that, even for their grandchildren, so that because we will only be able to survive together if we can be together. Thank you very much.